on 11th of March 2020, members of parliament and senators allied to President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta and Raila Amolo Dinga convened a major press conference at the Serena Hotel. And that press conference was attended by close to 50 senators and members of parliament. And in that press conference, the MPs asked the deputy president, William Ruto, to resign as the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. Because they believed he was insubordinating the president and also that his name was tainted in many major corruption scandals in this country. And earlier that week, James Orengo had actually caused a major storm by revealing plans to impeach the deputy president from office. And while these leaders were at Serena, Tim Tanga Tanga were also addressing another major press conference right at the doorstep of parliament. And that press conference was even bigger. They had over 90 members of parliament and over, over so they had over 90 members of parliament and senators. And for those who have forgotten, at, during that press conference is where Moses Korea uttered the words wakimwaga ugali tunamwaga kitoweo. But someone there, a senator, nominated senator, Millicent Omanga, also came out very strongly during that press conference and challenged the president to bring it on. Tuko tayari kwa uchaguzi. Tuko tayari serikali ivunjwe. Tuko tayari kwa na kwa debe. We enjoy 80% of the support of Kenyans. Wakimwaga ugali, tunamwaga kitoweo. Bring it on, baby. Bring it on. We are waiting. Let them bring the impeachment motion. So during that press conference, Tim Tanga Tanga were boastful. They were confident that they had the numbers. And I also believe that they had the numbers because that has been in the public domain. That the duty president controls the Senate and also controls the National Assembly. But the events in the last few, few days and weeks are proving otherwise. President Uhuru Mege Kenyatta engineered the removal of Kipchumba Murkomen and Susan Kehika from the Senate Majority Leader and Senate Majority Whip. And that, that move actually caused a lot of storm within the political circles. And senators who were nominated were actually called by, were actually warned, or received warning letters from the Jubilee Party to showcase why they did not attend that meeting. And one person who shocked me was Melissa Ndomanga. Because once Rafael Tuju and the chairman wrote those letters to the senators, there were six in numbers. Most of them started betraying the deputy president. But I was not shocked by the betrayal from the other senators. I was so much shocked by the betrayal by, by Millicent Omanga. And if you have been following the events at the Senate, the moment Uhuru Kenyatta kicked out Kipchumba Murkomen and Susan Kehika, he's now trained his, his gun on one man, Kithure Kindiki, who is the deputy speaker. So, so yesterday, Yesterday, the majority whip, Irungu Kangata, issued notice to remove Githuri Kindike. And I was expecting that of all the allies of the duty president, the one who was going to stand with him the most was Millicent, Omba, or, 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 Millicent Omanga. Because this is a lady who has always told people how the DP took her from selling bedsheets to nomination in the Senate. And when yesterday stories started, information started emerging that over 51 members, uh, over 51 senators had actually signed to, to, to remove 
had a police sign to remove kituri kidiki i was keen on reading the list especially the nominated senators now the list is out already and i want just to check this list i want i want us to go briefly through this list then you will understand why it's a big betrayal by omanga but we, we are going to look at why what lessons can the deputy president learn from this particular incident now i have the list here Kipchumba Murkomen has not signed. We know he, he comes from Rift Valley. Samson Cherarge has not signed. We know he comes from Rift Valley. Gideon Moy has signed. He comes from Rift Valley. So the first one from Rift Valley has signed. Then there's John Kenyon and Ritu. That's the, the Laikipia senator. He has not signed. Then there is uh, Sosan Keheka. Has not signed. Another ally of the DP. Then there is Philip Sama Salau Vascajiado has not signed, hopefully because he is a ally of the DP. Then there's Aaron Chariot, the Kericho senator, has also not signed, another ally of the DP. Then there is Christopher Langat, that's the Bomet senator, has also not signed, I believe because he's a, an ally of the DP. Then there's Johnson Sakaja, has signed that list. There is Beth, Beth Mugo, has signed the list. Then there's Milgo Alice Chepkiro Korel, that's from Bomet, nominated, has signed. Then the main person of my interest is Millicent Obak, Millicent, sorry, Millicent Omanga. Millicent Omanga has also signed. That's pure betrayal. And the DP can learn a lesson from this. And we are going to look into that. But before we go into that, if, if it's true that this list, which I believe is true, that 51 senators have actually signed to remove Kituri Kindiki as the deputy speaker, then the deputy president doesn't have numbers. He's been lying to himself. Let us look at the numbers. We have 67 senators in this country. 47 47 senators are elected. Jubilee as a political party has 34 senators. But there is also one independent senator. The senator for... Is it... Uh, there's a senator from Central. Who is known? Who, who won on independent? So that makes Jubilee, because he's, he normally sets with Jubilee, makes them 35. NASA coalition has around 28 senators. And then there are these other political parties have around four. So if NASA has 28 senators and we have 51 senators signing this document, then basically it means that 28, 50, 67, if you subtract, 67, if you subtract, sorry, 51, if you subtract 28, then you have 23. So it means 23 senators from Jubilee side has actually signed to impeach. Senator Kithuri Kindiki. What can William Ruto learn from that? It's simple. The DP doesn't have the numbers. So basically it also confirms that the parliamentary group meeting which was held at State House met the numbers. Because if 2023 20, senators, th then that means the DP is left with how many senators? If they are 35. 35. You remove 23. How many is left with the DP? So the DP doesn't have numbers. So it means if this removal is going to succeed, because for, for the deputy speaker to remove at the Senate, 
These guys need two third. And I'm seeing them getting the two third. Unless people like Omanga will now be convinced again to vote because this is just to approve for a motion to 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 move to be moved. MPs must sign, and that they don't need two third. They just need a simple majority. But what political lesson can the DP learn from this incident? Where he imagines that he has the numbers. He imagine that someone like Melissa Romanga cannot vote outside his, his line of thinking. Because personally, when I read the name of Melissa Romanga on that side, I thought probably the DP had allowed them to vote the way they want. But in that list, the allies of the DP, especially from Red Valley, have all decided to not to sign. Talk of Kipchumba Murkomen, talk of Chirargei, talk of um, Dr. Langat, talk of Cheriot. Non-allies. So Omanga ought to have been part of that. Omanga ought to have taken the risk, even if it means being kicked out of Jubilee Party. That's how you reward people. But she has not done that. But what lesson can the DP learn? In my view, four or five lessons, political lessons. Number one, the first lesson is simple. Politics is about interest and betrayal. So it means the next time the DP is making the choice of people to nominate, then he must first of all know so well that these guys can actually betray him. That's why I really sympathize with the DP, especially with the support of members of parliament he's getting from Central Kenya. If Omanga of all these people can betray him, what of Lindy Nyoro? Lindy Nyoro will wait. Moses Kuria will wait. Kimani Shungwa will wait until that right time to dump the deputy president. So the deputy president must start figuring out that in politics, the only thing which is important is loyalty. And that loyalty cannot be bought. So people like Millicent Omanga probably were bought to support Jubilee because they were kisses in Nairobi. So that's number one, interest and betrayal. So that's something that the DP must learn. And it's very simple. If you read the 48 laws of power, law number two is very clear. That never put too much trust in friends. Don't trust friends. Learn how to use your enemies. So the DP must now start figuring out, if these are my friends, then I should not put too much trust in them. He, he should, in fact, go for people who are perceived to be his enemies. Then bring them closer. These people will have a point to prove. To prove. Like, for example, now, if the DP can decide to go to someone like Alfred Kater, he can swallow his pride, go to Alfred Kater, bring him on board. That guy will prove a point, rather than depending on people like Omaga. Number two is political ownership in this country. That's also another good lesson. For you to have influence, you must have your own political vehicle. So this is a clear message to the DP. That next time he's going for a political contest, he must have a party which the Secretary General and the Chairman are his people. If he decides to move with them, they'll move with him. Not a situation where you are a visitor in a political party where you have put a lot of resources, a lot of energy and time to build. So it's a very good lesson for him. He must understand that, and not only the DP, any other person, any other person who is interested in running for the presidency must figure out, must learn from this, that there is ownership of political parties. You can only have influence in a party which you have control. Look at what is happening to the DP at the Senate now. Keep you more comment gone. Kika gone. The next person is Kituri Kintiki. The signatures are proving that it's likely to go. If it were the interest of the DP, these guys would not have gone. And for those who follow this event, the DP at some point, Oscar Swede claimed he made 22 phone calls to a senator just to save Kipchumba Murkomen. 
So it means the seeds are also too dear to him. But they are going, but there's nothing he can do. So political ownership is important for any politician. If you want to run a, your political party, make sure the secretary general, make sure your, your chairman belongs to you. And this is a lesson which Raila Odinga learned the hard way. Mwanzo took off with a certificate. Took off. And sometimes ago, I remember so well, when certain people wanted to take over ODM party, the men in black had to intervene. And people made noise. The idea was that the, a party must have a secretary general and must have a chairman who is controlled by the party leader. That's simple. The third lesson is that the DP must now start investing in building his own team. A team which he can have full control. I'm talking of a team in, in not these people who are just bragging. Cherergay can only make noise when he's in Nandi. Aaron Cheriot can only make noise when he's in Nandi, in, in, in uh, Kericho, or on TV. These guys have not even tested the smile of a tear gas. Let me ask you a question. ODM don't have numbers. And do you think any ODM leader would have been removed easily like that without a fight? Maji yata inge mwagika kwa parliament. Those are the realities. People like Orengo would have made even life difficult for the speaker. But in this case, that's true. So the DP must start figuring out and build a strong team. Note this one. Number four is that next time he's doing nominations, he must go for stable people. Where I mean stable people is people who, who really don't care. Who really, people who are mature enough. Kamani Peso Wakonayo, Kamani Masomo, for example, they might not have the money, but they have the education. Or if they're not education, they are stable in their own right. Not people who really just depends on you. All these people depend on DP. Every weekend they go for rallies. So it means they can cheat him. And this is what they've been doing. See the way they were bragging that they have the numbers. Where are the numbers now? Bring it on. Well, umeambiwa tu, umeandikiwa tu barua ya kusho case why. Then, the next day, we undakomu tuwa kwanza kusen. What kind of people are those? They need, nominations need stable people. Let me read for you, for example, ODM. ODM nominated Chebeni. Chebeni, I don't know her personally. I've never met her. Nobody in ODM knows her. But, I don't think she can betray ODM. If she tries that, she'll be kicked out. Probably the person who brought her on board knew why she was put on board. Now, apart from her, look at the other nominated senators and even members of parliament. Professor Duol, that one, atakufana raila, atak nini kifanyika. You go, Agnes Zani, atakufana baba. The other nominated ones, Ivoto. So that's something that DP needs. He needs stable people around him. And lastly, I think the DP lack people who have the ability to mobilize their fellow senators and members of parliament in parliament. Parliament is just a matter of give and take. We negotiate. But for them, when they see an opportunity like the one for, for, for Narok governor, then they rush and interfere with it. Then the ODM party now cannot side with them. So when they are being fought, then they pay back time for the ODM party on them. So I think the DP must now start figuring out how he can have a leader who can mobilize, who can look at things like, in that case where ODM was electing the, the, the PAC chair, they ought to have gone to the ODM party, then agreed, okay, you want this guy, okay, let's vote for him. So it means next time, if they have an election, then the ODM party can actually stand with them because they support them. But in this case, they undermine. Then after undermining, then they expect you now to support them. That's why almost all ODM senators have been whipped to ensure Kithure Kintiki is gone. And just like I said about uh, Professor Ngeri, how can senators gang up about 
gang up against you, all of them. That huge number. Easily like that. So it means Kituri Kindiki also has a personal problem. I don't know what you think, but I consider Omanga move to be betrayal of trust on her part. If I were her, I'd rather be kicked out than stick. Because if anything, the DP can still re uh, retain her and support her financially if need be. Thank you guys. And please, if you are bumping on this video for the first time, just do the needful. Hit the subscribe now. And to the subscribers who want to continue, thank you guys for your continued support. And by the way, those who continue checking vugvugu.com, I really appreciate. Thank you guys. And please, may you have a good day. Before I leave, as usual, give the video a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down if you don't like it. From there, I'll be able to know whether it's good or bad. But the best one, just drop your comment. Thank you, guys.